Hello friends, hope you are all doing fine and safe. So I am starting a, a new set of content on ARM Cortex M4. Uh, this is one of the finest uh, processors available in the market right now and this is very advanced and whatever we have seen earlier in my playlist was ARM 7. ARM 7 with the complete details I have taught you, I have taught you the instruction set, the demos, the codes, everything have been shown and I wish I get you the same stuff for ARM Cortex M4. This session will serve as an introductory session where you will clearly understand the architectures, the features, the programmer's model will be dealt a little later but it's an agenda and instruction set. This is what the flow is going to be. In this session, we will understand what M4 is all about, what are all the architectural details and the features. Let's get into the session right away. This is aimed at providing a low power processor with lesser gate count. Remember, this is regarded as one of the best and finest low power processors available in the market. Also, they ensure low interrupt latency. Interrupts are always important. Interrupts are very important indeed for real-time systems and there should not be any latency in terms of processing the interrupt and here in ARM Cortex M4, they ensure low interrupt latency. Also, the support for floating point arithmetic is completely provided here and this ARM Cortex M4 is more suitable for the real-time embedded applications which are which definitely require a very quick response and in time they they have to be quick because they cannot be affording any delay and let me ref define the real time here real time is nothing but the logical correctness of the operation within a deterministic deadline so if you cross the deadline it's death so it's not going to work out so the system which is called real time should not cross the deadline so this processor is aimed at providing you a very fast solution within that deterministic deadline All right let's get into the features step by step this has got the arm core ARM core is the uh, heart of it and that's that's the basic concept that you need to understand. How do we ensure the fast interrupt? We have a dedicated unit called as NVIC. We call it nested vector input controller and this is integrated with the core processor and this NVIC unit ensures fast interrupt response and the low latency is also ensured through this unit. We have got multiple high performance bus interfaces. We have seen all the bus types in the ARM previous session in the previous playlist. I have told you what are all the buses available and we had a session there. Similarly, we have got very high performance bus interfaces available here, which enable the faster processing in this. And the very important point that I'd like to stress here is the better debugging support that we have been given with this ARM Cortex M4 and the breakpoint support is given for debugging you need breakpoints and the breakpoint support with watchpoint tracing and the very important appreciable feature of printf kind of debugging support because most of us are kind of very familiar with debugging a code through printf methods we use printf and then we debug if it is working fine or not right that's exactly arm has followed right now with cortex m4 and they provide you the support for debugging your code in arm cortex with the printf style and TPA is there, which is nothing but the trace port analyzer. It's going to be very helpful and we'll see all this in detail in the future session step by step. Understand now, this is a this, this is a session where you understand the fundamentals and the features of it. And we have got memory protection unit and floating point unit, as I told you earlier. And one very important point that you need to understand is whatever is mentioned with this symbol you can see that this stitch symbol they are all optional which means that you may or may not want to have it this is the symbol that i'm talking about and this is all optional so you can see that i have got the optional boxes available in my architecture everywhere so all these may or may not be there based on what you prefer so this is a good feature i do not want something i can as well ignore it you need not take it up with you because it is being provided so we can select and we can handpick what we want and that's the biggest advantage that we have with arm cortex m4 can we go ahead and understand all these building blocks step by step this architecture diagram that you have in front of you is presented in the data sheet by arm cortex m4 and we are going to see all these one by one step by step uh, as as quick as possible because I am not going to prolong the session. I'll try to complete it as soon as possible and this will be a good session. I believe let's go one by one. The first is the arm core. The core features are to be understood. Understand the point a subset of thumb instruction set is defined in arm v7 m architecture and we follow the same core architecture. 
we have got a banked stack pointer we have got a stack pointer support and it is banked the most important development from the previous versions is we have got the instructions sdiv and udiv which is called as integer divide instructions and hardware integer divide instructions sdiv and udiv are present here and we have got handlers and thread modes available here the thumb and debug states are there thumb is already seen debug states are there because this processor is supporting debugging to a greater extent and support for interruptible continuous instructions we have got ldm stm push and pop all these are supported and this ensures the low interrupt latency and the most important point that we need to remember is the automatic processor state saving and restoration is done here automatic processor state saving i can save the status of the processor automatically and it can be restored as well and this ensures the low latency and the big indian byte invariant and the little indian accesses i mean the big indian format and the little indian format both are supported and the most important addition that they claim with arm is the floating point unit we have got 32 bit instructions for single precision data processing operations which means we have got 32 bit instructions and floating point support is there we have seen in the arm architecture arm 7 where we have got mac which is called as multiplication and accumulation unit in the data flow and the same is available here here we have multiply and accumulate instructions which are ensuring increased precision at the same time they are also fast the hardware support for conversion addition subtraction multiplication with accumulate division and square root is also available the inclusion is square root you need to understand that this was not there in the previous versions where we have got it here and ieee rounding models when you want to round off a number we need to follow some guidelines and ieee rounding models are supported here and 32 dedicated 32 bit single precision registers are available and they can be also used as 16 double word registers this is the same with arm 7 we had 32 registers there totally when you count and same is the case here we have got 32 bit registers available here and 32 are the numbers and we use three stage pipelining which is decoupled understand these are all the core features now we need to understand what is nvic nvic is nothing but nested vector interrupt controller this is the block that we are talking about we just completed this block where we saw the core m4 features with floating point unit and we are now talking about this nested vector input controller nvic this is meant for low latency interrupt processing and external interrupts which are configurable from 1 to 240 which means that we can have external interrupt supported and 1 to 240 and the most important point is we have got bits for priority we can prioritize and the bits for priority is set and it is configurable from 3 to 8 and you can dynamically reprioritize the interrupts okay you prioritize the interrupt can i reprioritize it in the run time can i dynamically do it yes you can do it and all possible through these two blocks i mean through this block which is connected to certain other blocks as you can see here and priority grouping this is the most important point this enables selection of preempting interrupt levels and non preempting inter interrupt levels which means that there are some interrupt which can be preempted and i can group them together there are some interrupts which cannot be preempted and i will group them separately so i have got now priority grouping which is very important and i understand what are all the interrupts which are to be grouped as preemptible and what are all the interrupts which are to be non preemptible i hope you know what is preemption and if you do not know i'll give you a quick example i am talking to somebody if someone comes and asks me a question if i stop this and answer that question it's called preemption and then i'll come back to the previous one that's called preemption i stop what i'm doing and i get to the new one because it is a higher priority it is called preemption now the next point is the processor state automatically is saved on is saved on interrupt entry and restored on exit remember this point the state automatically is stored you need not do any programming you need not do anything in a, in addition uh, for getting the interrupt handle so whenever there is an interrupt raised automatically the uh, status is getting saved and there is no instruction overhead when you exit it will be restored as well it is like you doing nothing and you just call the interrupt things will be taken care of and there is one more very important unit called as wake up interrupt controller the wake up interrupt controller will provide ultra low power sleep mode support which means that the power saving options are enabled and these two blocks are what we have seen right now one is nvic and another one is wic i hope you understood what it is now 
what is mpu mpu is nothing but the memory protection unit what is that you can see that here this is called the memory protection unit and remember there there are eight memory regions in the entire uh, memory map we have got eight memory regions and sub region disable is available srd we call it the sub region disable option is available enabling the efficient use of memory regions i can disable the memory locations i can I, 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 to make it very precise, which area you got access, you can decide that. And the ability to enable the background region that implements the default memory map attributes is very important point, and that's done through memory protection unit. This MPU is meant for enhancing and making sure that the memory access is all perfect. And this MPU was not available and supported in the previous versions. This is a new inclusion. So what are all the things we have seen? We have seen ARM Cortex Core, we have seen NVIC, we have seen WIC, the uh, memory protection unit is seen and the next one is going to be very important which are nothing but the buses. We have seen the buses AMBA bus, we have seen AHP, we have seen in the previous uh, sessions that I have taken for ARM 7 but we have got more here. We have got three advanced high performance bus light. AHP light is there, you can see that there, I code, D code and the S code is there i code d code and system bus interfaces are there they are very advanced and they have got you can see that here they all come under the bus matrix and i code ahp light instruction interface d code is for data interface s code is for system interface i name it s code but it is actually system ahp advanced high performance bus ahp for data for instruction for system interfaces this is very new and this was not there in the previous versions so this bus is way this bus interfaces are very good and the private peripheral bus ppb is supported private peripheral bus is also supported and apb advanced peripheral bus is supported all these are, are kind of inclusions that will enable you to interface things with a much faster speed at the same time ensuring the quality so this bus interface box is done and we have got support for this AHP, which is nothing but advanced high performance bus. We have seen that as well. So this is done, this is done, this is done, this is done, this is done. And these boxes are done, this is done. So let's go to the next one quickly. The debug features, right? This is very, very important. And I uh, request your kind attention here because uh, this is one thing that I see as the major difference between the previous versions. Whatever difference we have seen all this time with respect to architectural features, are okay but this one is really really amazing and they have given a lot of support for debugging and we are going to see that one by one serial wire debug support port serial wire debug port swdp we call it you can see that here the serial wire debug port or jtag based port is there this is for debugging you can see that here the serial wire or jtag debug port it is always called as swdp or swjdp we have got an optional flash patch and breakpoint FBP unit available in the system which will help me out in uh, debugging, implementing the debugging uh, uh, process and mean implementing the breakpoints as well as the code patches. This is that the flash patch breakpoint we call it FPB. We have got optional data watch point and trace DWT. This is all optional you can see that the the mark here, the stitch mark here is telling you that all these are optional and optional data watch point and trace unit for implementing the watch points and you can go with the uh, profiling as well as the data tracing is much more easier. We have got an optional instrumentation trace macro cell. This is very important and this is the one which is providing you the print up style debugging. This box is now seen and optional a uh, trace port interface unit for bridging a trace port analyzer which is called the TPA including the single wire output SWO module. This is very important and finally optional embedded trace module ETM we call it embedded trace module is here and all these are very specific. You see that here this one, uh, this one this one this one and this one this one all these are very specific for only debugging so you can understand the importance that they have given for the debugging features and that's it we have seen the architectural details of arm cortex m4 we'll come back with the programmers model i'll come back with the instruction set explanation with some demos shortly thank you very much